Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick. I am getting at this a little bit later today than I had intended. Um, but welcome to our daily devotions. We are looking at Mark chapter 10 today. We're starting at verse 13. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, and come follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. So we have a couple of different things happening here. The, the let it, the little children come to me, which is obviously a famous saying of Jesus. And it's one of the reasons why we, we have such an emphasis on, on uh, bringing children into the kingdom of God through infant baptism when they're obviously very young, uh, because we know that Jesus invites them. He wants them to come. Uh, he, we, we don't have to wait till they get to be a certain age to bring them to uh, to Jesus, because this is his invitation. The next section is a, a very famous section about a man who asks about uh, inheriting eternal life, and Jesus has a very nice law gospel dynamic here. The man comes thinking that he's done all of these things, and then Jesus says, one thing you lack, and he gives the man the law. Go and sell what you have and give to the poor. And now finally the man is, is led to realize that he's not been so faithful at keeping the commandments and he's not as perfect as he thinks he, that he is. Um, and so this is meant to, to, to prick his heart. It's meant to get him to rethink um, the rock on which he stands, which is following the commandments, and, and instead coming to Jesus in a spirit of, of repentance and acknowledging his human frailties and, um, and, and seeking... God's grace and, and his mercy, which is, you know, how God wants us to come to him and how God wants us to uh, approach him. And, um, uh, you know, this, this, this childlike sense of, um, of helplessness and of, of needing to be with Christ, not by something we can affect under our own power, but by something that God grants us through his grace. All right. Let's continue as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, a uh, few announcements. Men's breakfast coming up this Saturday at, uh, at 8 a.m., uh, followed by an elders meeting at 9.30. Council meeting is going to be this coming Sunday. 
Uh, let's see. Of course, we have our midweek Lenten service happening uh, on, on Wednesday. We're going to be talking about the Church of Sardis. And then this coming Sunday is going to be parking lot service at 8.30. So I hope we can see you for that. And then um, I had something. Maybe it was the men's breakfast. Okay, so that, that's still going on. You get a reminder email about that uh, tomorrow just to make sure that, uh, that, that we see you. And then no confirmation this coming Sunday night. It's going to be spring break. So enjoy the time that you have and, and use it to catch up on your memory work and some other things. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again uh, in worship this weekend. Elizabeth will be here, our deaconess, tomorrow for your daily devotions.